An important part of Jesus' mission took place around the large lake known as the Sea of Galilee. While walking along the shores of the lake many years before, Jesus came across two fishermen, Simon, later known as Peter, and Andrew, his brother, who were casting their nets. He summoned them to his side and turned them into fishers of men. Philip, Andrew, and Peter had grown up in Bethsaida on the shores of the lake. On his travels from town to town, Jesus stopped over in Capernaum, where at the end of the day, people from all around the lake arrived on foot or by boat to bring him their sick, the possessed, and all those in need of comfort so that he could heal them. Many people came by boat to see him, and after he had preached to them, he gave them food. Now Jesus is in Jerusalem for the annual Passover celebration. Some of his disciples are preparing to set out from Capernaum to spend Passover with him. Good morning. Mary, are you ready? It's a long way to Jerusalem. still 10 days until Passover. We'll get there in time this year too. Is he coming too? Of course. He will carry our belongings. And he'll be happy to see his master again. Won't you, Juniper? said we would find a donkey. There are three here. He also said near the first house. Hey, you! Why are you untying my donkey? The master needs it. He'll send it back soon. The master? God bless him. I'd give him anything. Give something. There. Thank you. Thank That's you. how you respect the law. What's happening down there? Let him go! He hasn't done anything! Silence! What is all this? They're friends of the Nazarene. Let them be. It's him we want, him alone. And with 
without causing a stir. But... We don't want an uprising in town. When the moment comes, we'll set a trap for him. There. We're going to Jerusalem. The Son of Man is about to be handed to the priests of the temple and the scribes who will condemn him to death. Master, if that's so, we won't go. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if you in your turn had only understood on this day a message of peace, it will not leave one stone standing on another within you. And all because you didn't recognize your opportunity when God offered it. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. Blessings on him who comes in the name of the Lord! He has sent me to announce the kingdom of God to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, to give the blind new sight to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favor, men of goodwill. I want to see. <gasps> Can you see now? It's Jesus of Nazareth, the prophet. What's a prophet? A prophet is a saint sent by God to teach the people and lead them to salvation. My son away from me. What's he like? What 
says do not be afraid daughter of Zion your king is coming riding on the back of a donkey We're here wasting time, and the world is running after him. Father! Why are you following him? Because he is the Messiah. Don't be foolish. Come home. I am doing the will of our Father in Heaven. Then how do you know the Almighty's will? I just listen to Jesus. When He speaks, He is the voice of our Father. I've lost you, my son. I've lost you. Now the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. If a grain of wheat falls on the ground and does not die, it remains only a single grain. If it dies, it yields a rich harvest. The light will be with you only a little longer now. Walk while you have the light, or the dark will overtake you. Believe in the light, and you will become sons of light. Master, which is the first of all the commandments? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You must love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. I'll do as you say, Master. You are not far from the kingdom of God, young Tobias. Alas, for the scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! They are like whitewashed tombs that look handsome on the outside, but inside are full of dead men's bones and every kind of corruption. Do you hear him? He's insulting us. We must try to put him in a bad light in front of the people. I'll ask him if it's permissible to pay taxes to Rome. If he says yes, the crowd will say he's an enemy of Israel. If he says no, the Romans will condemn him. You must not allow yourselves to be called masters, since you have only one master, and you are all brothers. And you must call no one on earth your father. Since you have only one father, and he is in heaven. Master! We know that you teach the way of God in all honesty and are not afraid of anyone. Is it permissible to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Show me a coin. Whose head is this? It belongs to the man who is Caesar, the Emperor Tiberius. So I say to you, give back to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God, what belongs to God.
did you see? That woman has put in more than any of them. For they have all contributed money they didn't need. But she has put in all she had to live on. Come with me. I'm going to pray to my father. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that your son may glorify you. Peter. Yes, Master. Why does a good Israelite visit the temple? To pray. And what do you see instead? I see people playing dice, merchants and money changers swindling and cheating people. <laughs> According to the scripture, my house will be a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves! He's provoking us! He's insulting our authority! This is my father's house! Not a marketplace! Where's the Nazarene? are you? My name's Reuben. I'm 13. I've been waiting for you, Master. I want to follow you. Come with me. Just a few days before the Passover that year, Jesus went to Jerusalem. As he entered the city, people ran to throw their coats before the donkey he was riding. It was a triumph. Jerusalem was full of pilgrims from all over Palestine during those festive Passover days. And when the rumor got around that Jesus had entered the city, many ran to see and hear him, to receive a grace, to be healed, to be consoled. Jesus had come, even though he was aware of the fact that the most hostile enemies to his messianic preaching, the Sadducees, would not miss this opportunity to attack him. He did not hold back from saying and doing that which had to be said and done. After his triumphant entry into the city, Jesus moved without fear to the temple, 
and expelled the dealers with their stalls of merchandise. My house will be a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a robber's den. This provocation against his enemies could not have been more serious. Who were his enemies? They were the powerful men of the temple. They were the men who held political, religious, and economical power that made even the Roman procurator watch his step. They were the priests and the elders of the Sanhedrin, which governed the city, regulated temple worship, and supervised practical administration and juridical questions. At the top of this hierarchy were the descendants of the great and powerful family of the Sadducees, the wealthiest men of Israel, merchants, owners of land and cattle. They were a very strong social group which kept control over Israel, even by means of religious power. For at least 10 years, the high priest of the temple had been a Sadducee, in spite of the opposition of the Pharisees, the other great party of Israel, which taught the law of Moses and the Torah literally. The religious and political fights which divided Jerusalem and all of Jewish Palestine in those years, together with the endemic poverty of many, the spread of disease, and the repressive presence of the Roman legion made for very unstable moods among the people. It was in this context that Jesus was seen by the temple authorities as a danger. They were afraid that if the people were to be led by Jesus, there would be a revolt against them and the temple. No one could fail to see that in that society, Jesus' message of good news, the law of love, the proclamation of the Beatitudes, was an invitation to make a great change. For this reason, the people of Jerusalem and the pilgrims of that Passover received Jesus as a king, singing with joy the Aramaic expression meaning, save us now, Hosanna. It was for this very reason that those who were afraid of his power to convert and move the people wanted to seize him and have him put to death.